Welcome. My name is Ashley Jones, and I'm the Vice President of Sharif Medawar Real Estate Investing. I want to thank everybody for coming from all around the country. I really, really appreciate it. We have a variety of professionals and investors on this webinar, and I just know you guys are going to be happy of the time you're investing with us. We'll be taking live questions, so please make sure to utilize your panel and send them in to us. So at the end of the presentation, we'll actually answer them live as many as we can. So let's get started. CMREI is proud to present Mr. Rick Brown as your presenter. He has been a great friend to Sharif for over 15 years. Mr. Brown is one of the most successful real estate investors in the country. He is known as one of today's leading real estate investment experts and facilitator in the acquisition of bank-owned foreclosures. Everyone, please welcome Mr. Rick Brown. Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Okay, good. Well, we're going to have some fun here. And uh, I'm going to cover a lot of different things. My name is Rick Brown. I'm the president and CEO of Wholesale Foreclosures, Bank Foreclosures Direct. It's a proven business skills corporation out of Wyoming. And our office is located at 4660 La Jolla Village Drive. We have the fifth floor there, right across from the UTC Shopping Center. I've been very experienced in real estate and I've been able to make a lot of money and I want to share that with you here today. I usually don't do webinars, but I was asked by Sharif, who's a very great friend of mine, if I would do this. And uh, we're going to try this out and see if we can have some fun and see if we can't all make some money here. I'm going to cover a lot of different things. Please take some good notes. So if you don't have a notepad, I'd get a pen and paper and take some good notes here. I've been in real estate since 1972. I grew up in San Mateo, California. That's the Bay Area. Now, my mom, she worked at the Hillsdale Mall right there in San Mateo. She worked for a company called Zales. I have an older brother, older sister. My brother and older sister, they're very intellectual. They both got great grades, graduated, got scholarships. My brother just retired from the California State Senate. He was in charge of all of our ports. Uh, I was not that sharp in high school. I didn't have great grades. I didn't get any scholarships or anything like that. What I was going to do is because I didn't have any scholarships and my mom didn't have any money, my mom's a single parent raising three children. I was going to go to the College of San Mateo, a little junior college right there in San Mateo. And when I graduated the week I got out of high school, I started to look for a job. Back in those days, that was 1972. Shoot, when you were looking for a job, guess what you used? The newspaper. Remember those things? Yep. I was going through the newspaper every day. Just so that my mom had some really cool clients of hers. She had all the 49ers, Joe Montana and all them, but she had two very, very wealthy clients of hers that bought a ton of jewelry and diamonds and gold and stuff. They were both in real estate. And just so happens that same week I got out of high school, they popped by. They were in the area. They popped by just to say hi to my mom. And they were chit-chatting and stuff. And you know, before they left, my mom said, hey, John, would you do me a favor? You know, my youngest son, he's been having a few challenges. And uh, I was wondering if maybe if you'd sit down and chat with him a little bit, maybe kind of get him, you know, going in a little better direction. He said, he's, he said, shoot, Mary, you know, I love you. Shoot, I'll do, I'd be more than happy to sit down with your son. Do me a favor, have him call my office. Here's the number. And just say that, you know, what's his name? Rick Brown. Okay. Just tell my secretary that, you know, I'm expecting his call. Have him call me tomorrow in the morning. First thing around nine o'clock, I get in real early. So that night, my mom came home. I was sitting in the living room. She said, how'd my day go? I said, I was looking through the paper. I got a few interviews and stuff. She said, I got some friends of mine. They're very wealthy. They're very close friends of mine. Just so well, my mom introduced them to each other, and they ended up getting married. And uh, my mom said, you know what, Rick, will you do me a favor and call him tomorrow morning? He wants you to sit down with him and talk for a little bit. I said, sure. No problem. So the next morning, I picked up the phone. I called at 9 o'clock, right on time. I told the secretary, this is Rick Brown, son of Mary. And she said, oh, shoot, I've been expecting your call. Let me put you right through. Put me right through to him. He started talking, and I started talking. And he said, so what are you doing right now? I said, I'm just going through the newspaper looking for a 
summer job before I started college at San Mateo. He said, if you got time, why don't you pop down to my office? He's, his offices was the Bay Federal building right on El Camino Real right there in San Mateo. I said, sure. When should I come down? He said, come on down about 11 o'clock. So I went down. It's a real nice office building. Went up the elevator. He had the whole top floor. Went in, talked to the secretary. She said, oh, he's expecting him. <clears throat> come right on in. Took me into his office. His office was just beautiful. He was sitting there. He says, have a seat. He finished up a phone call. And we started chatting. It turned out he's like the most down-to-earth guy you've ever met before in your life. And we're talking about all kinds of things. Next thing you know, shoot, time's flying by. Next thing you know, it's like a quarter to 11. And he goes, Rick, it's a quarter to, or excuse me, a quarter to 12. It's just about lunchtime. I get up at 5 a.m. every morning. Look, I'm starved. Would you like to join me for lunch? I said, sure. Why not? He says, come on, I'll take you downstairs. I'll take you to my favorite restaurant. So we went down the elevator, walked across the lobby, and it just so happens that he took me to this French restaurant. And he says, this is it. This is my favorite restaurant in town. We went in. I said, can I get in like this? He says, ah, don't worry about it. I said, just come on, come with me. Because he was in a suit and I was in my jeans and stuff. Next thing you know, we're sitting there having lunch and I find out, shoot, he owns the restaurant. I also found out, heck, he owns the entire building. I found out that he's the guy that started Century 21 Real Estate. He's a self-made multi-billionaire. He also started Founders Title Company, which later became Old Republic. And shoot, after lunch, he said, so, um, heck, Rick, you know, I really like chatting with you and stuff. He says, so you're looking for a job for the summer? He says, how'd you like to work for me? I said, really? He said, sure. I said, well, heck, what would I do? He says, anytime I need you to run an errand, you run errands for me. If I need you to go down to a title company or go over to an architect's office or anything else, I found out that he's a developer also. And he built half of Hillsboro and he built Redwood Shores and, oh gosh, he did by the way, Hillsboro is one of the most expensive areas in the Bay Area. I said, so what would I do? He says, you'll just run errands for me. He says, you'll be my gopher guy. And I looked at him and I said, your gopher guy? I said, shoot, I could do that. I could be the gopher guy. And I became his gopher guy. I ran errands for him. I did this. I ran errands for his wife. Shoot. And they even had me up to his house. And I cleaned his garage. I washed their both of them had a Rolls Royce. He had a Porsche Turbo. and She had another small Mercedes sports car. Heck, they had a helicopter in their backyard. I'd clean that out and do whatever they wanted. They'd have dinner parties, and I would help serve drinks or put out the food and just be around, do whatever they needed to do. And then about a week just before I was supposed to start College of San Mateo, he called me in his office and said, hey, Rick, so... You know, I was talking to your mom. She's real happy you're going to college. and I am too. Never went to college. I've made billions of dollars, but never went to college. He says, you know, I was talking with my wife last night. and We really like you. And um, how would you like to just stay on and work full time for me? Now, I can't give you a college degree or anything, but I'll tell you what I can do. I promise you, I can show you how to make a ton of money. And I said, Okay, <laughs> sounds good to me. I became his right-hand person. Uh, shoot, I ended up going through real estate school. I'm a licensed real estate broker. I'm a commercial broker. I've been a, had a CCIM designation. I've had a CHO license, a condominium hotel operator, a condominium managing agent, a CMA license. That gives me a license that if I was to do a development I can put together the HOA fees or the homeowners association fees before it's offered for sale to the general public. I worked for him for a very, very long time. After about six years in the late seventies, um, one day he called me in and to his office and said, so, um, Rick, have a seat. I sat down. He says, so you want to go take a ride? Hey, whenever he asked me any question, all I'd ever say is, yeah, yes, sure, whatever you want. I didn't ask where we were going or anything. He said, good, go home, pack up. 
Uh, tomorrow, I want you to meet me uh, at the airport. We're going to go out to Washington, D.C. said that he has a friend of his out there wants to introduce me to him. So I packed up my stuff. I went down. We flew out to Washington, D.C. Of course, he had his own plane. Never been to Washington, D.C. He took me to a place called the Resolution Trust Corporation, the RTC. I don't know if you guys remember, but in the late 70s, early 80s, we had a savings and loan crisis. And what happened is the FDIC came in and shut these lender, all these savings and loans down. And they acquired, they liquidated, they acquired all their assets and they gave all their assets, residential and commercial real estate assets, to the Resolution Trust Corporation to liquidate. Well, we flew out there. It just so happens, this is his one of his best friends. And we sat there and I, he says, Rick, we're going to make a lot of money. We're going to have some fun too. And I said, well, how are we going to make a lot of money? I don't have any money. He says, don't worry about it. I got a ton of money, but I also have a ton of investors. Seems like whenever you make billions of dollars, you got a ton of people that want to jump in and get involved in whatever you're doing. And we picked up properties 30, 50% below market value. We brought them back. And if you remember at that time, real estate was slow. We were in a recession. And what we did is we sold properties under market value and we sold them just like that. See, real estate's never slow. It's overpriced. And he explained that to me and he taught me everything. That year, I made over a million dollars. Now, he made a lot more than I did. Do you think I cared? <laughs> no. I was just happy to have made over a million dollars. And you know what? I never thought I would ever see a time where it was so easy to make so much money in real estate as it was back then until right now. What we're experiencing and been experiencing over the past years is makes the RTC look like nothing. And tonight I'm going to explain to you how you can cash in on this too. Because everything I'm going to teach you here tonight has to do with our golden rule. Write this down. This is our golden rule. No risk. No risk. We're not gamblers. We're not real estate speculators either. Okay? Everything I'm going to teach you is a very systematic and predictable process. If you follow our system and do things the right way, you will have absolutely no risk and high reward. Why real estate? Well, real estate, you either own it and control it. Let's face it. Real estate's created more millionaires and billionaires than any wealth center ever. Remember back in December 7, 2011, you know what the Wall Street Journal wrote that home foreclosures jumped to the highest level ever recorded? And then in 2012, Realty Track wrote that a return to delay free foreclosing is expected to bring grief to the housing market as banks start to process hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of new foreclosures. Hundreds of thousands of them. Bank of America in 2012, March, they kicked foreclosures on the West Coast into overdrive. Notice the defaults jumped nearly 70%, and they just kept foreclosing. Everybody, Chase, Citibank, all these lenders were just on a bandwagon. In California, in mid-2012, there was 2,210,594 people being foreclosed on or delinquent in mortgages. That's just in the state of California. One in every 10 homes throughout the entire state of California was in some type of foreclosure out there. But then what happened is by the end of summer, all of a sudden foreclosures started going down. And they kept going down and down and down and down and down. Now, this wasn't, most people didn't understand what was really happening right here. What happened is in June of 2012, the United States Department of Justice started an investigation into wrongful foreclosing practices on all these lenders, allegations of fraud, robo signing. Um, and what happened is the moment they opened up their investigation, it brought everything to a standstill. In other words, lenders weren't allowed to foreclose on anybody. They weren't even allowed to start liquidating their assets that they had already taken back. But 
in the news to everybody, hey, things are getting better with the housing market. Why? Foreclosures are dropping and dropping and dropping. And they continue to go down and down and down. The chief executive officer of Realty Track wrote the low foreclosures numbers that we're seeing right now is not an indication that the massive wet reservoir of distressed properties built up over the past few years has somehow miraculously evaporated, said Brandon Moore, chief executive officer of Realty Track. The foreclosure crisis is not going away anytime soon. At the current rate, Bloomquist, VP of Realty Track, expects it to take to late 2015 before the country's massive foreclosures are in the rearview mirror. On March 7, 2013, 10 servicers agreed to pay $8.5 billion over flawed foreclosures. They were going case by case, file by file, and the lenders didn't like this. So they said, I'll tell you what, how about we pay you $8.5 billion, you get out of our files, you leave us alone. And this ended, for those lenders, an investigation through all their files and everything else. And what happened is we started to see some action from these lenders, but not all lenders were in that. Banks started repossessing more and more homes. The price had risen. Banks were kind of going, well, actually that investigation was kind of good for us. It slowed up inventory. Demand drives price, price drives profit. It pushed up the value of the homes. And lenders said, shoot, now I can foreclose and get even more money out of these properties out here. On May 7, 27, 2013, flippers are riding a new housing wave. Broker says flipping is re-emerging nationwide, especially where home prices have risen sharply over the past few years. Recently, Thursday, August 21st, 2014, B of A agreed to pay $16.65 billion for the FT for the Federal Trade Commission get out, the Justice Department, get out of my files. That is the highest, largest settlement on record. And it goes way past the cost of doing business. Unbelievable. So now what's going on is we're seeing a new tide of foreclosed homes on the rise again. The Capital Gazette out of Washington, D.C. writes in here, state protection has ended. The Justice Department lawsuits have pretty much settled up with most of these lenders. Hundreds of thousands of bank-owned properties still sit empty across the country. A backlog of unsold properties that will eventually make it in the, into the housing market at a discount. Note, I said discount. This is where it brings us to where we are here today. America is now being besieged by vampire and zombie foreclosures. Have you ever heard of these things? Unbelievable. Most people in the general public have no idea what these are. Vampire foreclosures, this is where the bank actually sees the property, but the previous owners continue to live there. Anybody in this room know somebody that's been living in a house, hasn't made their mortgage payment, it's been three, five years or more? That's because they weren't allowed to foreclose because of the Justice Department lawsuit. And then you have zombie foreclosures. These were people, they thought they got notices of an auction. The property was going to be sold at a trustee sale or in a court if it's a judicial state. And what happened is the people up and said, well, I give up. I'm moving out. And they moved out of their houses. But then the banks couldn't foreclose because of the Justice Department lawsuit. And the houses are sitting empty but the owners still own the property and they don't even know it. And they're also liable for liability issues on the property, property taxes. So when you see a vacant home, you need to know how to find out who owns that property. Now, where's the money? That's what we're all here for. Where's the money? Well, qualified short sale properties, I'm loving those. Extremely motivated sellers, trustee sale, government auctions that nobody really knows about. Bank-owned foreclosures now that they're able to liquidate inventory, if you know what lenders to key on out there. If you would ask me about you know, short sale properties a year ago or more, I would have told you forget about it. Why? Banks weren't answering. Oh, come on. They had their hands full with the Justice Department. 
let alone 49 attorney generals that were suing these lenders as well. But now it's a different story. See, lenders are increasingly using short sales instead of foreclosing. Mortgage backers, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, they passed a new law that speeds up the process. And with their new policy guidelines, it requires the lenders to make a decision on an offer within 30 days of receiving a short sale offer. Game on. It's a new game. But you have to know who you're doing business with. You have to make sure it's a qualified short sale. What is a qualified short sale? Number one, one where the sellers have already gave their lenders a hardship letter. They provided their lenders two years tax returns, two months of bank statements, two months of paycheck stubs or P&L statements, profit and loss if they're self-employed. They have to sign off authorization release information. Uh, they have to provide their lender with a financial statement and worksheet, mortgage statements on any other loans. They want to see, are you delinquent on any other loans out there? And they need to have completed a form 4506-T. If all these have been done, this is a qualified short sale. If these have not been done, I am not interested in it whatsoever. So when I see a short sale, first thing I want to know from the agent, if they're being represented by an agent, is are these people a qualified short sale? Have they done all these things right here? Have you opened up communication with the lenders? If you have, then I'm very, very, very interested in the property. But you got to understand what lenders do with these short sale properties is they agree to do a short sale with the people who own the property. And a short sale means that they're going to take less than what's actually owed for the property. So in all essence, your offer is really answered by the lender, not by the seller. It has to be approved by the lender. But what they've been doing is when a short sale property goes on the market, the lender doesn't, he, he tries to get as many offers as they can. They'll let it stay on the market. They're not going to answer your offer right away. They're going to let it stay on as long as they can until they get maybe 10, 15 offers. In other words, they're going to play all the buyers against each other. And real estate agents aren't really supposed to tell you what somebody else's offer is, especially the listing agent, but they do. And the reason why they do is because it helps uh, their seller and it helps the lender get more money. So next thing you know, you got, you're the highest offer. Next thing they call you back, say, hey, you want to change your offer? Why? Because we got four other offers and they're a lot higher than yours. Most of these can sell for over list price. So what we've done and one of our strategy is, is when you have these properties, you got to make multiple offers multiple offers on different properties. You got to know what kind of a clause. When you make an offer, you got to put a clause in to motivate that lender and sellers to accept your offer right away. The clause goes like this. The seller and the lender in this transaction is hereby notified that the buyer in this transaction is making five simultaneous offers. As soon as one is accepted, all others are hereby rescinded. In other words, null and void. So in other words, what we're telling the lender and the seller, hey, look, I just wrote you a good offer. It's clean offer. It has very few contingencies. It might even be a cash offer. And I got news for you. You better take my offer right now. You better accept it right now. Because if not, I got four other offers out there. And as soon as one is accepted, all others are hereby resent. And that means this offer to you isn't worth the piece of paper it's even written on. And a lot of times I will put a cover letter on my offer. In other words, what I'm trying to do is shove it down that lender's throat. But I also want to know who the lender is. And the reason why I want to know who the lender is, because I want to know how strong or how weak that lender is. The weaker the lender, the more I can shove it down their throat. And I'm gonna explain more to you about this because this is the whole key to everything. You also got motivated sellers. What would motivate a seller to offer a property below market value, especially if you're making multiple offers and you're a cash buyer? And when I mean cash, it doesn't always mean your cash. It could be an investor's cash. Maybe they've already relocated, bought another house. In order to buy that house, their offer has been accepted. They got to sell their other house in order to buy that house. Maybe they inherited the property. Shoot, the people today, they inherit property. They don't want the property. What do they want? Money. And they want it now. We live in a world of instant gratification.
Maybe they had a bad experience with property management. Maybe they got tax problems, bankruptcy. Maybe they're retired, have lost a job. Maybe they have income properties. They're liquidating some other properties so that they don't have to change their style of living. Maybe they went through a divorce. I seen some, a couple, I got a referral to me. A couple wanted to sell their house. I showed up at their house. I'd already done a CMA, a market analysis. I knew what the house was worth, subject to a walkthrough. I looked at the comps in the area. I looked at the outside of the house before I showed up. I went in. I knocked on the door. They invited me in. The wife answered the door. She brought me in, introduced me to her husband. We went and sat down in the living room. The wife sat on one side of the living room. The husband sat on the other side. And I sat in the chair in the middle of them. I asked them if I could take a peek around. They showed me the house. I walked through it. I made notes. I did a full inspection of the property. It was in great condition. The house was worth, this was in an area not too far from where I live. By the way, I live in San Diego. Probably took upon that because that's where my office is. And this was in an area called Pacific Ridge. It's kind of Del Mar Heights area, a very, very nice area. The houses run, this was a five bedroom, three bath house, about a little over 2,800 square feet. Houses in that neighborhood, in that area, oh, they go for about $800,000, give or take. So I asked them, I had the CMA, I knew what I could buy the property, well, what I could sell it for. I knew I could sell for easy for 100, you know, eight hundred thousand dollars, and I sat down. And I said, "So I've, I, I've pulled up. I know, kind of know what your first mortgage is, and did some research. Did you guys have a price in mind?" And as soon as I said that, wife instantly stood up. She says, "Yes, I do." I said, "Okay, so what are we looking at?" She says, "We want." $524,065.79. I said, you're kidding me. And the husband said, no, we're not kidding me. The wife says, that's exactly what we need to pay off this house and pay closing costs. We've already talked to escrow. We already talked to our lender. And that's exactly what we want. All I want to do is make sure he gets nothing. The husband looked at me and said, all I want to do is make sure she gets nothing. I said, shoot, I think I can help. I got that property, put a little bit of money into it, just a little cosmetic paint, turned around and sold it for $810,000. You know what I call that? Sweet. Sweet, 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 sweet. Also, people having health problems. Would you all agree? It, medical insurance is expensive. Hospitals are expensive. Okay. For whatever reason, they might be motivated to sell their house for any one of these reasons, or they had a major stock lock at Mars, stock market loss. Let's face it, the stock market is legalized gambling. Might as well head to an Indian casino out there. And how about government auctions? Do you realize the government has hardly any money to advertise these things? I haven't seen any advertising go on on any of them anymore. In the old days, they used to advertise and give out catalogs. I bought tons of things at these auctions. What government auctions? Who does government auctions and sells real estate as well as other nice toys? Uh, HUD, uh, Housing and Urban Development, the VA, the FDIC, the IRS, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the USDA, U.S. Marshals, U.S. Customs, Department of Defense, the GSA, Department of Homeland Security, ATF, local police, Border Patrol. Do you ever see these advertised? Never. You almost have no competition at them. But the trouble is, unless you know about them and know how to find out what they're selling, to do your research ahead of time, there's only two places they sell. Liquidate. Assets. And by the way, do drug dealers drive nice cars? Do they live in nice houses? Okay, do they have nice toys? Well, I got news for you. When they get busted, okay, the government seizes all these things. And then they put it out. There's one auction place, and it's over on the East Coast. It's in Virginia. And then there's another one in California in an area called Riverside, California. I went to one, shoot, not more than, say, six months ago. They had 18 homes for sale. They had about 20 cars. The cars range from Lexus, Mercedes, 
uh, BMWs, very, very, very nice cars. Okay, they had jewelry, Rolex watches, they had all kinds of stuff that they'd confiscated and taken over. I was there, you know how many people were there at that auction? 15. Okay, and by the way, I knew everybody there. And we looked at each other, why? Because we've been going to these auctions before, you know, for the past 25 years. And of course, we all looked at each other and said, shoot, what do you like? You did your research on these? Shoot, I'll tell you what, I like this house and that house. You like that one and that one? You like this one and that one? You like this one and that one? I don't know, I'll tell you what. Shoot, don't bid on mine, I won't bid on yours. Shoot, we stole homes. We got homes there for about 50% below market value. I don't care how you cut it. And these were homes in California, rich areas. We were able to steal those properties, turn them on, put them on the market and sell them quick and make a ton of money. Okay. You just got to know how to get a hold of all these people out there. Here, I'll give you, I'll give you a couple. Okay. You go to homesales.gov. Okay. What do they sell? They sell houses, buildings and land, farms, international real estate, Currently, they represent the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, the USDA, uh, the VA, and this is where you find their houses as well. Here's a hot auctioneer right here. This guy's hot. Look at this. What does he do? He does auctions for the U.S. Treasury, FDIC, real estate, personal property. Go to ricklevin.com. Everybody, write that down. Rick Levin, R-I-C-K-L-E-V-I-N.com. Go to his website. This is exactly what it looks like. Stay up to date. Go right down here and click right here. And what you'll do is you will then see a place, put in your email address. And every time that they have a sale coming up, okay, they will notify you ahead of time. You'll know what the inventory is. You'll know if it's real estate, jewelry, cars, boats, shoot, yachts. Heck, I... I I nobody bid on it. There was a yacht for sale. It was in Long Beach. I did my research. It was a 165 foot yacht. It used to be the Catalina shuttle. Take people over from Los Angeles over to Catalina Island. This boat, this it's a ship that, you know, central air conditioning, it had stabilizers and shoot, it's a yacht, 165 foot. Shoot, I went to the auction for this. I had done my research. I had a guy look over the, the ship. I went down, checked it out. Turned out I'm the only one that ever did any due diligence on it. I ended up getting it. I figured this ship was worth about $1.6 million. I picked it up for $300,000, which was the minimum bid. I didn't even know how to drive the dang thing. I had to hire a captain. Took it down to San Diego. I played around with it for a little bit. Every time I did, I had to hire a captain, but shoot, at least I had a 165 foot yacht. I can drive a ski boat, but not a yacht. I ended up, I got a slip over in Hawaii, at Kiwala Basin. I had this captain drive it over. We cleaned it up, started a dinner cruise company. And then after a couple of years, sold the ship and the business for $2.5 million. You know what I call that? Sweet. Sweet, 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 sweet. Everybody go to Rick Levin, sign up there. You'll get updated on all the auctions that he has upcoming. Everybody, by the way, everybody say, thanks, Rick. Thanks, Rick. Okay, you're very welcome. I gave you something right here. Okay. Now, what about the easiest, most profitable way to make money in today's market? Wholesale foreclosures, direct from lenders. Okay. Do you understand that there's 903 banks in trouble? They're on the FDIC watch. They're this close from getting shut down. Okay. You know what happens when a bank gets shut down? The FDIC seizes all their assets, whatever they are. No forewarning. They literally just shut them down. This is what happened to banks countrywide. All these banks that you heard about getting shut down. Wells, all these bank, banks came in, bigger banks bought them out. Pennies on the dollar. 
the trouble is, is that you used to be able to go to FDIC.gov and you'd see a list of all the banks on the FDIC watch list. But guess what? That was before, about five, six years ago, they had it all up. You could see who was in trouble and then you could pick on them. But what happened is after it reached, and, but by the way, there was only like less than 10. All of a sudden, when there was over 50 of them, people at the FDIC got a hold of their tech person, their IT said, you take that down, take it down, take it down now, right now, right now, right now. Get those off our website. We can't have people come to the FDIC, the federal government, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation website and see there's over 50 banks that are about to go out of business, be shut down by us. Next thing you know, people's going to be looking at it and go, oh, my God, that's my bank. Oh, my God, honey, grab my car keys, grab my wallet. Shoot, let's go get our money. Banks lend out nine times their assets. If everybody ran down to take your money out of the bank, guess what? They'd run out of money. So they took it off. But guess what? I have connections. Remember when I told you I bought properties from the FDIC or the Resolution Trust Corporation with my mentor that taught me everything about real estate, made me tons of money? Well, I got news for you. His friend, Art Toronto, who ran the Resolution Trust Corporation, I got news for you. He runs another company right now. It's called Prezient, P-R-E-S-C-I-E-N-T. Who is Prezient? My gosh. They are the asset managers of the FDIC, and they are also the auditors for the FDIC. Now, you can't get that list of all the banks on the FDIC watch list, but guess what? I can. How many of you like to have that list? Uh, I bet you would. Why? Because then you know who has to liquidate assets. See, when they're on the FDIC watch list, they've got to liquidate assets. Everything on their books. They have to get rid of all those bad, non-performing residential or commercial real estate assets. If they don't, FDIC will shut them down. If they're too slow, like wa moo moo wa moo moo like a cow, too slow, what happened to them? They shut them down. They took all their non-performing residential and commercial assets. And that what happened is instead of them liquidating them, guess what? They sold them to other lenders. That's when Wells Fargo, B of A, and all these big banks came in and stole these things for three to five cents on the dollar. Now, what if you could find out a bank takes the property back in foreclosure, it's a troubled bank, and you could cross-reference that bank and get a hold of their uh, liquidating department, their asset managers, their disposition of troubled assets, their department of liquidation, these disposition specialists that they have. They all call them different names. And what if you knew how to get to the decision makers and you knew they're on the FDIC watch list? What if you could tell them you're interested in some non-performing residential assets? What if you could, I could show you where to go. How many of you like, if I could show you where to go to a government website you don't know about, and you could pull that bank up and you could see how many residential assets, homes they have, how many commercial property non-performing assets they have and see them all and see where they're located and get a hold of these. And before they get shut down, how'd you like to pay? Do you think if you can get to a decision maker, what do you think? And by the way, not everybody that you get a hold of at a bank is going to tell you that they're on the FDIC watch list. That isn't how they start off a Monday morning meeting. Hey, how's everybody doing? Good. Well, before we get started here, hey, anybody do any vacation time? Okay, you got vacation time due, sick days due. Uh, I recommend you take it. Why? Uh, we're about this close from getting shut down by the FDIC. I'd be out looking for a new job. Only the people at the highest level, and that's why you got to understand how to get to that highest level. Okay? It's just like you got to get to a level four decision maker, and I can explain to you those of you who are serious, I'll explain to you how you get to that decision maker. And then what they do is they will look at it. They understand they're this close to getting shut down. And if you make them a good offer, heck, I was able, I've picked up houses 30, 50% below market value because what happens if they get shut down? How much are they getting? Three to five cents on the dollar. How many of you like to know how to do that? Guess what? You need to know how to find them. We have software. I'll explain to you. How would you like to be able to find any lender, who they are? Do they have an REO department? 
Do they have a liquidation department? Do they have asset managers? How would you like to be able to go in and search that lender, find out who they are, go to another website, know their inventory, that now you're finding properties that nobody even knows about. Do they have, are they wholesaling? Are they liquidating? Are they in a place where they have to do these things? How would you like to pull up, you know, what, what bank is where and who are they located? Do they have an REO department? How do, where are they located? Who's the contact person? Do they have a phone number? Yes, they do. They have a phone number. We can pull up any lender anywhere. Do they have wholesale programs? Are they offering wholesale? Are they liquidating assets? But you got to be able to do your research. You need data. Data. There's lots of places you can get free data if you know what you're doing, but you need good data and clean data. There's places that you can go on to like uh, Property Radar, also known as Foreclosure Radar. They have another one called property radar as well. You can identify the properties, know exactly which ones are pre-foreclosures, foreclosures. You can search by location. You can go in and click on this. We live in a high-tech world. Somebody asked me, ah, shoot, if you want to make money doing these foreclosures and making money with real estate, do you need a computer? Uh, yeah, you do. It's the year 2014. You need a computer. Why? Otherwise, you'll be too slow. In my business, if you're not first, you're last. Okay? Like Ricky Bobby said, if you ain't first, you're last. Okay? Look, you can go to Realty Track. They also have a very good way to find properties as well. You can also get stats, trending. I'll show you a bunch of other ones. You got RealQuest as well. You've got free ones like Redfin and, and Realtor.com. Now, I was making a lot of money on properties, and especially with these lenders, and I was doing just a ton of these, because why? I knew who was in trouble, and lenders were in trouble. I knew how to find the right properties. Then one day, I got written up in the Los Angeles Times and said, I'm making a ton of money with all these foreclosures. I'm a local investor. And by the way, I invest, I don't discriminate. I invest all across the country. But it's even easier if it's right in my own backyard. One day I got a call, got a call from this guy, Michael. Okay, Michael Williams. And I said, hello, called my cell phone. And by the way, I usually don't give out my cell phone number. So I figured they knew me, but I didn't recognize the number. And it was from the East Coast. And uh, I said, yeah, what can I do for you? This is Rick Brown. He said, well, this is Michael. And uh, I got your number from a mutual friend of ours. I said, okay, uh, who would that be? And he said, Art Toronto. Remember Art used to be head of the RTC, Resolution Trust Corporation, now the president and CEO of Prescient. I said, oh, yeah, I know Art, great guy. So what can I do for you? He says, well, Art was telling me that you're making a, just a ton of money doing all these properties and stuff and that you've been very, very successful. Uh, by the way, I, I know you're one of your mentors who taught you everything too, John. I've met him with Art before. I said, you yeah, know, so what can I do for you? He says, well, you know, I know you got a lot of money. You've been very, very successful, but we have a lot more money than you. I said, excuse me? Hey, I would never say this to anybody, but since you just said that, how much money you got? He said, well, we have hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. I said, okay, you got a lot more money than me. What do you want? He says, well, please don't take that the wrong way. What I'm trying to get to is Rick. Look, I know there's a lot of properties out there and I know you, need, I know, you know how to find them. I, I, we don't want to be in your business, but we control a lot of money. And our job is to employ that money. If it's not employed, it's unemployed, it's not earning anything for our investors. Our job is to employ it in the safest investment we can find with the highest rate of return. So our question to you is, instead of using your money, how would you like to use our money? I said, Okay, I'm interested. What do you want? And they said, we want half your profit. I said, let me think about that for a minute. Okay. <laughs> I 
I know I got a lot of money, but let's face it. If I go out and buy 20 homes and the average home in my area is say seven, $800,000 or up into the millions, let's face it. I've got to liquidate those assets before I can go out and buy any more. And I have more inventory than I can have cash for. So I said, sure, I'll do that. What do we got to do? He says, well, first of all, if you're interested, okay, I'm going to send you over a checklist of any properties that you are interested in. Here's the checklist. And he said, this is what we need. Basically, what they need is they need interior, exterior photos of the property. They need a good competitive or comparable market analysis with at least three recent comps. They need an estimated cost of the rehab and they need for me to give them the ARV selling price. In other words, after renovation value. So you tell me what you're going to buy for, what's it going to take for you to fix it up and what can you sell it for? And if we like the numbers, we'll go ahead and do it. Now, are you interested? I said, absolutely. Okay. Here's what I would do if I were you, Rick. I contact your attorney. Um, by the way, give me your email. I'll send you an email with all my contact information. Talk to your attorney. Have them put together an equity, part or excuse me, have them put together an equity participation agreement and a non disclosure, non circumvention agreement. He says this way. Get that done, send it over to us, we'll review it, make changes. Once we get that signed, what that does, and this is just in to protect you, that means when you send us over one of your transactions, we can't steal the deal. Not that we would, but it's just for your protection. I said, very great. Send me your information. I talked to my attorney. I had him put together a non-circumvention, non-disclosure agreement. It cost me about uh, $4,800. I had them put together an equity participation agreement. I asked them, so how's it going? What do you need from me? He says, well, send us over a bid from a licensed contractor. Send us over all these things, and we'll take a look at the numbers there. I said, okay. Um, in the equity participation agreement, he stipulated that we're willing to go ahead. What we'll do is we'll put up the cash for you to buy the property, fix it up. And upon the sale of the property, we'll provide escrow instructions providing for our safety. We'll record a first deed of trust against you or first mortgage against your property. And upon the sale of the property, we're to be paid back all the money we have invested plus our half of the profit. I said, no problem. The non-circumvention non-disclosure agreement cost me about 1200 bucks. But by the way, it's worth its weight in gold. By the way, now we have about, we have over 20 of these lenders with, and their minimum is like $100,000, but they'll go up as high as, up as high as $10 million on residential real estate. By the way, how many of you like to have a list of all my investors? Yeah. Uh, I suppose you would like to uh, also have my non-circumvention, non-disclosure agreement. Would you like my equity participation agreement as well? I bet you would. Why? So you wouldn't have to pay an attorney to go ahead and put these things together. Take a look at this. Let me show you something real cool. You got to have tools, right? Tools. See, we got to be able to look at something and make a decision right away. In my business, you snooze, you lose. Here's what we call our property decision maker. Here, I'll show you a live transaction real quick. Take a look at this. Here's a property that I'm working on. Let me change some numbers around here. As you can see, this analyzes the deal. It's a deal maker pro. How would you like to be able to look at a property and in less than one to two minutes, be able to make a decision, yes or no? Here's a property that I'm looking at right now. Let me change the numbers because this is a different deal than that one I'm working on. I'm looking at a property right now. We just got accepted offer, 305,000. There's only three numbers you need on this too. Okay, what's it going to cost to fix up this property? Fix up rehab is $60,000. In other words, what am I going to buy for? What's it cost to fix up? 
And then you scroll right down this little Excel spreadsheet and you put in, what am I going to sell it for? This property right here, market value right now, I could sell it right now and have offers coming in and sell it within a week for $560,000. I hit this next little sell right here. Okay. Uh, projected 560000 Okay, 560000 Scroll right down here. My final profit on this property is $84,943.36. How'd you like to be able to analyze a property like that? It also tells me if I'm using an investor, here's my amount of first loan. I have a little setup tab right here. I can change this. My first private investor, let's just say he'll go 70% of the ARV, and then I'm going to need a gap lender. In some case, I got some that do 100% of the ARV as long as it's the numbers are good, but I also got some at 70. Let's look at it at 70%. That means I got somebody putting up private investor 392 for a first. Scroll down here. I also got a second at 32000 that person's putting up $32,000. What are they gonna get back? The second loan profit is 20,000. They're putting up 32,000 to make $20,000. Is that a great deal for the investor? Yeah, that's what's called a gap lender. Oh, by the way, do I care what I'm paying the private investors or the gap lender? Heck no, look at my bottom line. I'm making $80,000 on the deal. You know what I call that? Sweet. Sweet, 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 sweet. All the way home. By the way, how many of you like have, have a copy of my Excel spreadsheet? Be able to analyze these that quick. We did a property up in Burbank. Profit, over 50000 This one in Cerritos, over seventy-five. This one in Pasadena, over 80000 How would you like to do a deal and make fifty grand, eighty grand, or how about hundred grand? You need the tools. You need to be trained. You need to do things quickly and you need to do them safely. And that's why all of these things are built in safely. Why isn't everybody doing this? It's not about money. It's not about credit. There's a ton of people with money and credit. Fear, fear. Nobody's ever seen a market like this. Low inventory, nobody knew why. Now all of a sudden lenders are cutting deals with the justice department. 49 attorney generals were suing them all. Everybody just saw a lack of inventory. Demand drives price, price drives profit. I showed a friend of mine, Blaine, how to do this. He kept going to all these real estate seminars. Shoot, you got these guys going around the country that say they do real estate. I'd like to see what real estate they've done. Here's Blaine. He had been to Armando, that Armando Montabongo guy, Robert, whatever, Kiwasaki, Russ Whitney, you name it, I was there. I spent over $40,000 on their coaching and mentoring programs. They never helped me do a single property. Rick and his team of experts, they're the real deal. They showed me how to quickly get an actual wholesale foreclosure property direct from the lender, below market value, sell it fast for a $40,000 profit. Thanks, Rick. With gratitude and respect, Blaine Smith. Here, you want to be successful? Write down these three keys. Number one, write it down. You need to have a goal. Number two, you need to have a deadline, which time you'll accomplish that goal. And number three, most important, is you need to have a consequence, something at risk to motivate you to fall through and no other options. The biggest mistake people make is they fail to or they're unwilling to give themselves a consequence and no other options. Look, if you're serious, I'm looking for a few people on this line here tonight that are willing to let me train you, teach you. I will give you all of my things. I'll show you how to use a system that I put together, how to track REO foreclosures, get wholesale properties, do easy fix and flips. I will show you how to use smartphone applications, apps on your smartphone. How'd you like to be able to drive down the street and see every house that's for sale right on your, right on your phone and do a quick CMA right on your phone? Just like that. We've got apps for our phones. Shoot, I can drive around anywhere. I ask my wife, what are home selling for here? It pulls up, I can put it on a radius, tell me one mile, two miles, four miles. Just put it in. Uh, we have all of our private investors, our investor packages. I can put together an investor package and show you how to put one together in 15 minutes. Why? You know that Excel spreadsheet? 
what do you think I send to a, an investor? The Excel spreadsheet, along with the recomps, a bid from my licensed contractor. And by the way, do they send somebody to look at the property? Yes, just before you get ready to close escrow, they will send a inspector of from their company of their choice go through and make sure that you're not missing anything so that there's no mistakes made and i'll show you exactly what goes on i'll give you that checklist of what you need to do how you put it together i'll show you how to use other people's money opm other people's assets other people's credit other people's experience i'll show you how to get qualified short sales and deeds in lieu of foreclosures i'll show you how to work with motivated sellers i'll show you how to work with any property as long as the numbers are right i'll teach you real estate formulas for commercial real estate why sharif and i love commercial real estate government auctions i'll give you show you how we make a ton of money with government auctions. Shoot, you can go do a government auction. I got a Rolex watch. I was with my daughter at the auction. I told her to bid on a Lexus car. She got it. She took it right down to the dealer and made 10 grand. I got a, a, a Rolex watch for under a hundred bucks. And I was so scared because I'd been to New York and I know they sell knockoffs. This was not a knockoff. I know I had my own Rolex that's real with me and it was just like mine and I looked at everything weight this that the back bought it took it to my jeweler shoot he gave me eight thousand dollars for the watch and I only invested a hundred bucks everybody can make money with this how'd you like to have a list of all the bad banks oh by the way I also have a list of all the strong banks how many of you'd like to have a list of all the strong banks why because that's where I got my money and you should have yours why I don't want my bank to get shut down. I don't want to lose my money. I'm going to show you how to use a land trust. When you buy properties, sometimes I've been buying properties direct from lenders. You got to watch out. Sometimes they have a clause in there that you cannot resell that property for two years. Now, I went through this over and over. I spent a fortune with my attorney. And what we did is my attorneys figured out that if we put it into a land trust, and that can be created with a stroke of a pen, and recorded, I, can, I, I can't sell the house. But if I put the house in the land trust, I can't sell the house, but I can sell the land trust and the house is inside it. Are you with me? I'll also teach you about uh, QRPs, Qualified Retirement Plans, Self-Directed, Asset Protection. I'll show you how to get smart tools like we have you got to have smart tools you got to have data i'll show you where to get that for free i'll show you how to create a residual income where you'll never again be dependent on a job the government social security or pension why because you can't be dependent on them anymore i'll show you how to retire wealthy and happy look my system system is spelled s-y-s-t-e-m stands for save you stress time effort makes you money fast in order to make money I got news for you. You can't make money thinking about it. You've got to take action. So if you're serious, willing to take action, I got news for you. There is an investment. Write it down. It's usually $3,000. If I was to do a live training, I would charge $3,000. It's regularly priced at $6,000. Tonight, I'm going to offer it to you via an online three-day training help, support, mentoring, coaching, write this down, $995. That's a one time. And by the way, if you've ever been to those guru guys and these people traveling around, they sell you for like three grand, a three day training. And then you find out they don't sell you any, they don't give you anything else. They, they talk about stories. They don't give you any Excel spreadsheets. They don't give you any tools. Uh, their secret sauce is buy my $40,000 platinum or gold package. I'm not going to upsell you on any of that kind of stuff. I want you to have all the tools to do the deal. Here's a picture of myself. This is me over on the far right hand side. That's a friend and associate of mine, Steve. This is Grace. This is Lee. By the way, I met Grace. She had been unemployed. She lost her job, looking for a job. Her son, Lee, had just gotten out of college, got a degree in finance, and he was working at a place called Noodles at uh, UTC Mall, okay? That's a little tiny fast food restaurant. Would you all agree that a lot of people get out of college now and can't find jobs? Jobs are tough. She was so worried, she's Chinese, didn't even speak good English either. Shoot, and she was skeptical. 
I told her, Grace, if you don't do this, you're going to regret this for the rest of your life. She gave me this card, and I'm looking at it right now. It's got an angel on it, okay? She says, with the help of, wrote in here, with the help of Rick, his staff, and their training, I made three deals in less than 30 days and profited very great money with no money and no credit, thanking God for the blessing of wonderful people like you. Thank you, Rick Brown, our mentor and great friend. And she's so cute. She always calls me up. Oh, Rick, I find deal. Shoot, what should I offer? I said, follow the system. It works like a flow chart. I helped walk her through the deal. She did three deals, made over $80,000. That was more than she made in her entire life. Not looking for a job, doing this full time, her and her son. Okay, their goal was to do 100 transactions in the next two years and retire. With that, they could retire. And if you do it right, I'll show you how to get residual income. Their goal is to have like $300,000 residual income. Okay, I'm going to teach you what, how to analyze a property like a profession in less than two minutes, know whether or not it's a good deal. I'll show you how to know when a property becomes a bank owned property before anyone else knows how to get to the decision maker. I'll, I'll show you where we get access to these banks. I'll show you how to get wholesale properties direct from the bank, how to talk to these people. I'll give you scripts, how to fix it, sell it quickly, blow market value, make a great profit. If I can teach you how to do this once, if I can get you to do one, you'll do two, you'll do four, you'll do eight, 16, 32, 64, and never look back. We'll show you how you can pull up the property and know if, if it's a first deed of trust, if it's a second, third, fourth, fifth, we're not interested. We're only in our first deed of trust foreclosure property. We'll show you who owns the bank, you know, who owns the property. How do you get a hold of them? Here's a property we found right here, fixer upper after renovation value, 450,000, located in an area of San Diego called Mira Mason. By the way, you can do this anywhere around the country. Picked up this property, $335,000. Renovation after renovation value is 450. We pick it up. We sell it quickly for 450,000. We put 30 into it. We pay off closing cost commissions. We pay off the property, walk away with 60 grand. How many of you like to do a little baby deal with me? Just like that, make 60 grand. Okay, maybe if you had the money to invest, you could keep all 60. How many of you in this room or on this call here tonight, how many of you need an investor? All right, what if you had to give the investor half? What if you could make 30 grand and you got no money invested in the deal? No risk, high reward. You make 30 grand, the investor makes 30 grand. By the way, the investor put up $335,000, put up another 30, that's 365,000, walked away with $30,000. Is that a great deal for the investor? Yes. And what about you? 30 grand. What if you could do 10 of those? 10 of those. Okay. What's 10 times 30,000? That's right, $300,000. Look, can anybody do the things that I'm going to teach you? Absolutely. But you got to take action. Do you really want to learn this from somebody who actually does this for a living? And by the way, I'm not going to be offering this very, this is it. This is a one shot deal here. Here's Dan. I showed him how to do this. He wrote to me, you guys are great. You made it so easy for me to make money. Thanks again for everything. Best investment I ever made. Delia Guan writes, thanks, Rick, for helping me do a fixer-upper using uh, none of my own money and make a lot of money fast. Yes, you are all great. Uh, Carlos Mendoza, thank you, Rick, for showing me how to easily do a wholesale foreclosure, make money fast. Even though I had no money, no credit, no experience, you are a real blessing. Here's Larry Richards. I'm working on closing his first deal right now. It's going to make him $50,000. Use none of my own money or credit. Thanks so much, Rick. You're the best. Can't do it without you. Bless you out there. Here's Brett. Brett lives. It, Brett has 30 years of experience in real estate. Okay. He wrote, Dear Rick, I learned so much from you at the workshop. Before this, several of us paid a lot of money to other groups because he's always trying to learn new things. Everybody is. Uh, but they only taught concepts. You provide us with everything to do a deal, real strategies, techniques, others don't teach, plus the forms, bank contacts, asset managers, apps, Excel spreadsheets, private investors money, your experience, support, tools, guidance are priceless. I wish I'd met you and your team sooner. And by the way, all these private investors, the first one I got, the guy who was a friend of our Toronto, when he called me after he explained to me his criteria, I said, hey, shoot, man, Mike, I, let me get this straight. So it doesn't matter to you if, if um, 
I have good credit, bad credit, no credit, employed, unemployed, experience, or no experience. It doesn't matter to you if I have any of those things. Is that right? He said, well, all you're doing is using the asset, the, the real estate, as your security. Is that true? He said, I wouldn't say it that way, but yes, you are for sure. Look, lenders are foreclosing again. Now is the time to make money. You got to take action. There's a new tidal wave of commercial properties coming along too. These lenders have settled up with the government. Okay, if you're serious, I'm going to give you a three day step by step online training broken into six separate sessions. So you don't have to sit all day long. You can watch it over and over again. This is the only wholesale foreclosure live training ever offered. It's going to start this Saturday, October 18th at this Saturday. I'm going to do it online with you. I'm going to open it up. I'll let you ask me questions. I'll leave it open so I can talk to you as well from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. I'm going to teach you how to track these REO properties, get wholesale properties, do easy fix and flips. I'm going to give you smartphone apps. I'm going to give you our private investors, our investor package. I'll show you how to put it together. I'll show you how to do qualified short sales, deals. I'll teach you how to get motivated sellers, properties from them. I'll show you how to do commercial properties. I'll show you about government auctions, what banks, you want the list of all the banks. I'm going to give you a land trust that's reusable. You can use it over and over again. I'll show you how to set up your retirement account, self-directed where you have the checkbook. I'll show you how to protect your assets. I'll give you smart tools and data. I'll give you everything you need to succeed. You don't have to buy a bunch of all this other junk, all these other people sell. And I'll teach you how to create a residual income that you can retire on and never worry again about money. Look, this is the only foreclosure training ever offered. I, I, I sell this retail at $6,000. At a live front end like I'm doing with you, I've discounted it by half to these people. Today, I'm giving it to you for $997. That's it. I'm going to teach you how to quickly research and track properties like a professional right from your smartphone or your computer, analyze the profitability of a deal in less than two minutes. I'll show you how to put together an investor package in minutes. I'll show you how to use our private investors. I'll teach you the strategies, the shortcuts. I'll show you how to get properties, direct wholesale properties, direct from weak lenders, below market value. You're going to learn my short sale secrets. Other people don't know. I'd like to see everybody who gets involved with me do a wholesale property in less than 30 days. You get your money back plus another twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. I know if I can get you to do one, you'll do two, you'll do four, you'll do eight, 16, 32, 64, and never look back. I'm only looking for a few people here today. Okay, I'm going to give you some free bonuses. I will give you three months of on-demand training where you watch the same training that I'm going to give you, the three-day training, in two-hour increments. Okay, spread over six different, a series of six. You can watch it over and over and over again for three months. Repetition is the mother of learning. I'm going to give you six months of toll free help, support, and coaching with my staff. And my staff are all, they've all been doing this for over 20 years. I'm going to give you my Excel spreadsheet, DealMaker Pro. You can analyze anything in less than one to two minutes. I'm going to give you free tools, data. I'm going to give you your personalized action plan. I'm going to give you access to our exclusive members only website. Shoot, on my website, you'll be able to get all the documents that I have. Non-circumvention, non-disclosure agreements, the equity participation agreements, reusable land trust, all of our smart tools, access to our preferred investor list. I'll give you our smartphone apps, key websites, free real estate data, list of the weakest and strongest banks. If you're serious, I'm only going to do this. And by the way, I'm going to give some of you something nobody ever gets. Very few people ever get. I'm going to give some of you, I can't do this for everybody. I'll do this for the first 10 people to call in, okay, and get involved. You sign up, get involved with this right here tonight. I'm going to give, I'm not going to do this for everybody, 10 of you. I'm going to give you something very, very, very extra special. Something very few people get. What is that? me personally value priceless 
for the first 10 of you that call in right now, call 407, area code 608-5448. We have an office in Orlando, Florida. I've got some staff standing by right now. Pick up the phone and give them a call. I will personally help you. How do you think, Grace, that Chinese lady, how do you think she did three, three properties and make over 80,000? I helped her. Am I going to give you my personal cell phone number? Yes, but only for 10 of you. The first 10 that call in right now, pick up the phone and call. Am I going to charge you anything? If I help you do a transaction and make a bunch of money, I don't want any of the money. It's not what I'm doing it for. I do want something from you, though. Listen up. What do I want? I want a really nice thank you card, just like I got from Grace. And I'll give you a hint. I like the angel cards. I like the cards with angels on them. I want to be a blessing. I know if I can help you personally do some of these transactions, I'll change your entire financial destiny. If you're serious, you want my personal help? You want my personal phone number? You want all of my tools? You want all of our stuff? Pick up the phone right now. Call 407 area code 608 five four four eight if the lines are busy at all stay on call back i have a, a small number of staff members there i'm not doing this for everybody i want to make this a very a very exclusive elite training if you're serious call now you've got to take action first 10 people are going to get my personal cell phone number my personal help all I ask is that you give me a really nice thank you card, preferably one with an angel on it, and a testimonial as well. If you're serious, call area code 407-608-5448. Okay, I'm going to teach you exactly how to make money. For those of you who get involved with me, you're going to have all the tools, all the education, and know exactly step by step what you need to do. Shoot, I put my system in. It looks like a flow chart. If you get stuck, look at the flow chart. It tells you what to do next. Step by step by step by step. If you're serious, pick up the phone. Call me now. Call my staff. Area code 407 608 5448. You may never, ever get this opportunity again, especially for $997. By the way, that's a taxable tax deduction. That's business education. I guarantee you, for those of you who are serious, this is going to be the best investment you ever made before in your life. This is a one-time investment that will pay you back every day, every week, every year for the rest of your lives. If you do it right, it will set you up. It will give you a nice couple million dollar cash cushion, and I'll show you how to create a residual income where you have more money coming in than money going out, never again be dependent on a job, the government, Social Security, or pension. If you're serious, pick up the phone and call. Now, if my staff gets busy, they'll let you know if you're one of the first 10 who's going to get my personal help and number, but they might just be able to take down your name and number and then call you right back. But it's up to you. If you're serious, you need to pick up the phone and call. I'm not going to offer this again. So if you're serious, get it now why you can. I want to create some testimonials. I want to I want to show people that you can't be going to these other things that don't really work. You need to do this the correct and right way. Pick up the phone, give us a call. It's been a great night. I enjoyed. I'm going to love training you guys. Let's all go make some money, but most of all, let's have some fun with it. Let's do good with the money we make. We're going to buy properties. We're going to fix them up. We're going to sell them. We're going to get a nice big cash flow. I'm going to show you how to buy properties, positive cash flow properties that are already fixed up, professionally managed. We don't want any of the headaches. And I'm also going to show you how to buy tax liens and tax deeds and earn 16 to over 30% on your profits, on your retirement accounts. But you got to pick up the phone and call. It takes you got to take action. There are seven fundamental laws of creating wealth. The seventh and most important is the law of action. If you don't take any action, nothing happens. You'll go back to doing the same things you've been doing, and you'll get exactly what you got right now. You want to change your financial destiny? You want to live happy, never again worry about money? Pick up the phone and call 407 area code 608 5448. You've been a great group. Take care. 
I look forward to talking with you. And by the way, I'm also going to let you attend one of my live trainings, live and in person. No charge. You'll be able to come. I'll let you know where I'm doing some. I'm going to be doing some next year. Okay. And I'll let you come to that for free as well. Pick up the phone. Call area code 407-608-5448. You've been a great group. Take care. Make a lot of money. Have fun. Take care of your families. Awesome job, Rick. Thank you so much. Uh, do you want to take a couple questions? Sure. Fantastic. If anybody has any questions, yeah. Yeah, we have a couple coming in. Uh, Serge asked, where can he get access to funding for rehabs in Chicago? Do you have any leads for that? Yes. All of my investors are willing to put up the rehab money. As long as you can, they can see it on, a, on my Excel spreadsheet that you send them over. Mm -hmm. You remember the list that I, I showed you, the checklist from that first investor? That's the same one I use today. They're going to want to see, you know, they're, in other words, what they want to see is an after renovation value appraisal. In other words, by the way, they, they will send their person down to check on it. In other words, you're going to say, hey, I got this property. I need some money to rehab it. This is what I need. And afterwards, I'm going to be able to sell it at that. Here's a CMA. They're going to send their people down, their appraiser down. And they're going to look at it, and they're going to appraise the property as if the renovation has already been complete. And then if you were to sell it like that in a renovated form, they just want to verify that your numbers are correct. If your numbers are correct, you're good to go. That's very easy. But they'll also, I've got people that will help you do the whole thing from buying it to putting up the money to fix up uh, to covering what are the carrying costs? What do we have? Carrying costs. What do we got? We got electricity. We got homeowners associations, HOA fees. We got property taxes, uh, homeowners insurance, all these things. We can roll it all into it. Perfect. All right. We're going to take just a couple questions. And if Rick doesn't get to your question, you guys, please call into the office now. Um, we have a lot of people calling in. If the lines are busy, uh, just keep calling uh, or send me a message with your phone number and we'll call you right back. Uh, next question comes from Dinesh. He said, what if I'm an investor and want to find deals and do the 50-50 profit split sort of deal? Uh, Perfect. Don't have a lot of time. Yeah. I get a lot of people like that. Shoot, get involved with us. Let me teach you what and train you just the way I train the other students so you can see exactly what we're doing. Because the last thing I want you to do is to put up capital for something that's not a safe investment. But I think if I trained you and showed you what it is, and by the way, I would also look over anything. If it came through us, I would look it over first. I would send it over to you directly rather than giving the people direct access to you and say, this is what we got. And here's what we're going to buy it for. Here's what it costs to fix up. And here's what we can sell it for. And here's a CMA that proves that. And I can show you exactly what it is. So if you're in that position, you want to be an investor, get involved with us. You can become one of our preferred investors too. All right. Next question from uh, Daniel. Is there a way to deal with someone other than the loss mitigation department to get property? Yeah, you really got to fight to get to the top. You got to get to a level four person whether it be loss mitigation, uh, the department's in charge of disposition of non-performing residential or commercial assets. And that's that's what I teach you at our training. I, I actually, when I train you, I give you the script so you know exactly what to say and how to get to these people. And then I show you where we access all the information through our bank guide where we can pull up the diff different departments. And I also explain to you how you get above the person you're talking to okay because if you go to the first level people they're just going to tell you no and the second right. no and the third when you get to the fourth that's a decision maker they're the only people that know they're on the fdic watch list everybody else is going to say no we list that with real estate people if we have something we want to sell and that's not true if they're a bank that's on the fdic watch list i call it a bad bank <laughs> All right. Next question comes from Kate. She said, do you need a license? And if you do have a license, is it more helpful? Great question. Kate, I love that name. My daughter's name's Katie. Okay. Catherine. And uh, no, you do not need a license. Nobody needs a license to do this. I'll show you how to structure yourself correctly. So, you know, you, 
you'll need to set yourself up with an entity. If you have a real estate license, you need to disclose it. But no, it doesn't hurt it at all. And you have access to data too, because if you're a realtor, you're on MLS, uh, Paragon or whatever you got in your area. So no, and I'll show you at the training. When I train you, I'll show you how to do that as well. Perfect. Um, let's see, I think we have time for one or two more. Um, is there a calculation on what to bid? Is that part of your spreadsheet? from Jake. Yes, it is part of the spreadsheet. You know exactly what it is. As long as we know what we can sell it for, the after renovation value, and I'll teach that to you too, I can do those numbers backwards. In other words, I can put in, here's what it's going to cost me to fix up. And by the way, how many, wouldn't you guys like to know how to fix up a house and what it costs, even if you're not a contractor? I have a phone app that does it. And by the way, I don't know anything about building. It, it, Anybody in my family sees me with any kind of power tool or even a hammer, it's like, oh, my God. Uh oh, shoot. Uh oh, we're in trouble. <laughs> Look, I, I got – there's apps. It tells you what's it cost me to renovate this. And by the way, I'll teach you how to renovate houses the exact same way every time. The same granite, the same update. What are we updating? We're updating kitchens. We're updating bathrooms. Uh, window coverings, uh, windows, uh, double pane, everything is exact same, same carpet, same tile, um, everything is exact same. And I'll show you how you do that and how you work with contractors, all of that stuff. But you just plug it in backwards. Here's if I, I know I can sell it at this amount, and this is what it costs me. I can just keep plugging in. What do I buy it for? If I bought it at this, oh, shoot, I ain't making no money. I need to buy it lower than that. Put drop it ten grand. See what the number. Scroll right down. See what the darn thing looks like. Here, I'll show you real quick. Let's just take for example this one I showed you guys right here. Okay, let's just say if I, um, if I had to pay four hundred and twenty-five thousand for it. Okay, I would check out my numbers. Uh-oh, I lost money. See the red? We don't like red. Red is negative. So you can use this sheet forwards and backwards. There's only three numbers you need to plug in this thing. What am I going to buy it for? What's it cost to fix up? And what can I sell it for? Those are the only three numbers you need. I'll show you how to play around and set up. Would you all agree that sometimes you don't pay 6% commission, you pay four. I could change that. I could change my insurance. I could change my taxes. I could change my utilities, closing costs, homeowners insurance, closing fees. I can show you the amount of my first private investor. And I got some that are go 100% as well. All right, Rick, we're going to take one more question. Then I got to go because I got to answer these calls. Um, the last question is, uh, are there any deals for college housing that are 80% discount? Anything for college housing in any city? Absolutely. Uh, not only single family houses, but you've got condos and uh, you've got, you know, multi unit, you know, one to four unit that you buy. I, I helped a friend get a four unit building that positive cash flowed out and his daughter rented one by UCSD. And of course she didn't pay rent. She lived in one and they rented out the three others. So that's a great way to do it. Love college. All right, well, Rick, thank you so much. Um, you covered so much. I also wanted to say we're getting a lot of questions about how you're going to get started. Everybody that calls in tonight gets set up. First 10 is obviously going to get Rick's information. And then everybody after the first 10 will be getting um, the entire quick start, the whole setup, our list for doing the live webinar training with Rick. Like he said, he's going to open up the lines. It's going to be very back and forth communication. He's going to teach you a lot. And you will also get your access into the private member site with all of his resources every single thing that he went over today. We're really excited to have you guys join us. Please call the office now. For oh, and by the way, on that, I forgot okay. to even mention that quick start. So if you guys, if you call in, I'll give you a quick start, things you can start doing right now to kind of prep for it. I'll also give you my office number where you can get a hold of us if you have any questions or need help between now and the training or anytime after the training as well. Give us a call. Look forward to having some fun and making a lot of money with you. Take care. Good night.